Alumni giving is a crucial aspect of supporting educational institutions and ensuring their continued success. Many universities and colleges rely on the generosity of the alumni to fund scholarships, programs, research, and other initiatives. Join Giving Tuesday Africa Hub in this episode as we discuss alumni giving. We expect that you will understand why alumni giving matters and be inspired to get involved. Welcome to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast. Welcome to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast, everyone. This is a podcast by <laughs> Giving Tuesday Africa Hub. And this podcast is designed to tell stories of generosity in Africa in an authentic and engaging manner. Here, we are going to discuss thought provoking topics on generosity, collective action, community development, social impact, you name it. And I am your host, BJMI Adedure. Today, we are about to delve into the topic of alumni giving, create awareness about the potential of organizing alumni to give back and inspire you, our listeners, potential supporters, you know, to organize alongside your cause areas and movements, including the When Alumni Give campaign. I am absolutely thrilled to introduce our guest for today, James Kimu the Executive Director of Strathmore University Foundation, who will be telling us a lot more about alumni giving. Hi, James. Welcome. Please introduce yourself and tell us all that you do. Thank you, Bidemi. My name is James Kimeo. Um, I was born and raised in Kenya, in the rural parts of Makweni County. Um, for university, I got a chance to study both my undergraduate and graduate program in the state of Minnesota in the U.S. And I did political science and social justice. But I never imagined myself as a fundraiser until I was recruited to work for my alma mater at St. John's University. I did work there with alumni, fundraising for over six years. And now I am the most wonderful job and opportunity at Strathmore University where I can engage others, alumni and donors alike to support an African institution back in Nairobi, my home country. So I serve as the executive director for Strathmore University Foundation, which is the fundraising arm of Strathmore University, one of the best institutions of higher learning in the continent. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. What an amazing introduction. I mean, I'm so glad I have you in my network right now. <laughs> um, yeah, before we you. go, <laughs> yes, before we go into, you know, the agenda of the day, we have a culture of our own here at the Giving Tuesday Africa Hub. We would like you to partake in a small generosity exercise and just kind of tell us, you know, acts of generosity that you've done. Tell us what acts of generosity have you received that you have never forgotten? Thank you, Bidemi. Um, that is a very uh, loaded question with a very personal story for me. When I got the opportunity to attend St. John's University in the state of Minnesota in the USA, the tuition cost at the time was $37,000. And that was before you had room and board and other expenses. I knew for sure my family was not in a place to afford it. Out of other scholarships I got, there was a generous family friend called Ron Pagnico. And this gentleman offered me to live with them just a very small distance from the university so I could walk or bike to school. Ron became a friend, a mentor, and my support system when I was there. He became my American angle, as I call him. And I lived with Ron for five years. He offered me a place to sleep, food to eat, a life to live, and nothing in return did he expect of me. Five years down the line, when I was leaving to go start my journey in a master's program, 
to a far off university from there. I asked Ron, how can I pay, how can I pay it to you? And he said, you owe me nothing. Just remember to pay it forward. Ron was always taking me out to eat dinner at a place called Famous Dave's. And this place had baby ribs, a whole rack of them, and many other things. But that was our favorite meal. And it was quite expensive for the college student I was. But he delightfully enjoyed paying for it. And you could see it was very authentic. And we had hours of conversation over these meals. And, and to this day, Ron has never allowed me to pay for a dinner. So he's such a selfless gentleman. And what he gave me is something that I will have for the rest of my lifetime to hopefully get to pay. Wow. <laughs> that is such an emotional story. Thank you so much for sharing this story with, me, with us. So James, could you share with us what the landscape of your alumni network is and tell us about your alumni engagement? So thank you, Bidemi. Um, Strathmore University um, started as a brand back in 1961 here in Nairobi. Um, and at that time, it was an A-levels, um, um, high school level, college uh, advancement program. And now it has grown over the time uh, to become a full-fledged university with seven different schools, uh, over 8,000 uh, students, and offering more than 18 undergraduate programs. So over the time, we have more than 30,000 alumni all over the globe. Uh, in our undergraduate programs, our alumni are about 17,000. Now, our alumni have gone out in the community to do amazing things, to be outstanding men and women in society. And we believe partly because our university is ingrained and founded on principles and values that include excellence, um, uh, community service, and service to society, um, and which are values that these alumni carry forward with them. Now, our alumni, we invite them for multiple things, uh, to be mentors to both our students and young alumni, to offer internships and jobs to those who graduate, to come back in our university campuses and engage with our faculty in class and in, in, in outside of class in research and beyond. Uh, we also invite them to support the institution, whether they are serving as uh, board members or volunteers or are actually donating some of their resources within their own means and that of their companies and corporates they work for. So we try to um, give them a, a, a many opportunities to do so. In the recent days, we have launched alumni chapters in London. Uh, in the East Coast of the US, we have three chapters. And this is a journey we continue to do so that those connections, networks, and support to young alumni and students can continue uh, within the alumni base. Thank you so much, James. That was quite insightful and amazing work that you are doing. Um, so this is now me asking the question in general, what do you think about you know, alumni giving as a campaign, as a cause area? What do you think are the key motivations of alumni giving? What are the conditions that enable alumni networks to give and connect more? Thank you for that wonderful question. I think alumni depends with when the institution starts to think of their students as alumni. If at day one through admissions process, you are not thinking of those young 18 year olds, the 19 year olds as your future alumni, you will have a weak alumni base. So most people, when they go through college and universities, they will remember their most fearful moments when they left home, they left high school, entered a university, how the culture felt, how they, their teachers treated them, the faculty received them, and so forth. And so that is a huge element to impact how the alumni do. Now, for alumni, for alumni to be well engaged, I think of three things, and that is time, talent, and treasure. And it can be one or the other. Um, some people will say, put your money where your mouth, 
put your money where your mouth is. In a way, when you invite alumni back for events, they want to feel like they're part of it. They don't want to feel like you just paid for everything for them to show up, even though they might give you that impression. Um, when you are organizing events, you want alumni to take leadership roles in choosing the where, the why, the when, the agenda of those engagements. Then that way they feel engaged and part of it. And also you need to provide a variety of ways to engage, especially our university that has alumni all over the globe, literally. You have to ensure that you're giving each and every one of them an opportunity to feel like part of it. I like to give this example. As most of us from the African continent, we know when our distant relative is having a wedding or a funeral, we sometimes are not able to travel and be with them, but we'll send a gift or contribute to the funeral expenses. And one day when we go there and they remember and they say to you, Bidemi, you have not been around, but we have received your message when we were in need. You feel like your presence among them. And so when we think of alumni, now in the life of virtual uh, capacities, even mentorship and different engagement speaking opportunities can be done so that every alumni has a chance to participate so that they can own the experience um, and, and feel like they belong and, and that they can contribute um, an opportunity. Now, most institutions are afraid of asking their alumni to contribute their own monies. And I think it's a very critical way of alumni engagement because really when you put your money somewhere, you feel like you want a little piece of that process and you want to know what happens to your money. And then therefore your voice is always present. And as you go along, you become more engaged. Thank you so much, James. That is very clear. I mean, you even answered um, my next question. I was going to ask you about how, what does, you know, meaningful alumni engagement look like? And you covered, you know, time, talent, and treasure. Um, just one thing I would like to learn is what factors are currently limiting alumni giving? Thank you very much. I think within my own experience, uh, research aside, I think number one, the number one reason why people give is because they've been asked. And I want that to sink in. The number one reason that you and I give is because somebody has asked. We tend to be shy to ask. And so this is a number one limiting factor. I would say another limiting factor is the unfortunate uh, catastrophe, especially in this part of the world, um, of corruption. We have lost faith in our own governments. We have lost faith in our own um, religious institutions. We have lost faith in our local community-based organizations. So we have very minimal faith and trust to any organizations that comes with their hand out to seek our financial support. We feel like we have contributed money to a funeral that never happened, to a wedding that never happened, to a sick person that never existed. And so you are always and constantly doubtful. If I give this money to these people, are they going to do what they say? We lack transparency. We don't know how to say thank you. Do we go back and say, Bidemi, thank you for the $20 you sent me last year. This is what I did with your money. And by the way, I'm so appreciative of it. And the person who received the money have succeeded in life. Do we do that kind of work? Or do we assume, like I don't know about in Nigeria, but here in Kenya, we have WhatsApp groups that mushroom every time there's a situation. And the minute the funeral is over, the wedding is over, the groups just close as overnight. And that's the end of it. You never know what that money did and was it for good cause or not. And so that feeling of lack of appreciation makes people to not be very um, energetic in their giving. Um, and then I think um, in addition to that is uh, we, we also do not know how to prioritize sometimes. Yeah. Um, if, for example, as an institution, do you have 
uh, a strategic plan on what is your next big agenda. What's, where are you rallying people? When you call your alumni, what are you rallying them to do? Is what they are doing uh, visible? Can they see the fruits of their work? Or is every dean, every uh, HOD or head of department, is there, is your VC and the board aligned? Or is everybody out there seeking and asking for support for different agendas? And then therefore making your alumni base feel like they're not sure what they are supporting. You guys are not organized. Um, is this thing going to be successful if we give money to different folks? So those could be very key limiting factors but bottom line, if you don't ask, people won't give. And I think even the Bible says something close to it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, James. I mean, I, I understand. And then the, the part where you talked about trust, transparency, accountability, you know, I can relate with that because if people are not seeing the impact of their contribution, you know, um, chances are they are not going to help in any way if you go back to them, if you ask again. So how can an institution, right, or a network or a campaign, you know, put certain measures in place to ensure that the issue of trust and transparency and accountability are handled? I would say um, when we approach alumni as institutions, and especially institutions of higher learning, we must think like business people and think of our courses as business projects. If you want to buy shares in a company, you must believe the company is in good hands and is most likely to perform well, or it has been performing well. And so, Sometimes when we ask alumni to give, we ask them, because you're an alumni, you should give. But we don't tell them the cause and why that is an important cause and how they will benefit or how others will benefit from that. So that's element number one. Then how do you build trust and transparency? One, the system by which you use to ask people for money. You need to give a transparent platform. Okay, where I can go and say, this is James Kimmel giving $100 for this particular project. In the end, I should get a report in due course that that project raised X amount of dollars, and this is the progress of that resource. If it was a scholarship, where is the student? Is there a success story? Can we know who that student is and what they're doing now? If it was failed, can we be honest with our donors? One of the things um, I, I always struggle with is when we have a scholarship and the student has gotten pregnant and dropped out of school, or they have had a drug issue and they have been busted and kicked out of school. And it's like we want to cover that up. We don't want to come out. And I say, think of your donors as your business partners. You need to go to them and tell them, Oh, I'm so sorry to tell you this. We have had a misfortune here. And this has happened. They gain more trust. People will become vulnerable to you. They gain your trust. And then, of course, a bigger one in a, in a, in a bigger stage is your management has to be right. You can't have funds embezzled. There are students losing their tuition money. Or, 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 or money being squandered, or faculty going unpaid. Because the message you're sending is this institution is unstable. You can't trust the leadership. You can't have board members being fired uh, for stealing from the coffers of the organization. And we have seen this, especially in our public universities all across Africa. So these are key elements when we are doing fundraising and engaging alumni that we have to be sensitive. That transparency also means when these misfortunes happen, people come clean and convey the message, apologize, and make sure you say we have learned from our mistakes and this is the way forward. Totally, James. I mean, things happen, you know, changes, um, acts of God, but communication is key. And when you consider or take this into consideration, communicating with your donors, those that are volunteering. I think they'll be more inclined to give. Thank you so much for sharing this insight. 
Um, just one last question before we go. Um, what's the future of alumni giving in Africa? Wow, that's a loaded one. I know. <laughs> I, believe, I strongly believe alumni is the engine of development of their alma maters. Alumni are the engine of development and growth in their alma maters. Now, you can imagine, Bidemi, every organization in Nigeria probably has one or two people that went in the same university that you went to in Nigeria or somebody else went to in Nigeria. So if we start thinking of alumni as our connection to every industry, to every company, to every opportunity, then you grow a massive empire that can change things in a dime, that can make life so easy for you, that can make you access the highest offices in the land, the highest opportunities before they even exist. So we must ensure that the way we treat the people closest to us, our friends, our family members, is the way we treat our alumni. That we even that alumni feels the same attachment. I'll give you a very tiny story. When I left my undergraduate program, it took me six and a half years to go back to work for them. And I remember the day I went for my interview and I was walking into the building to the interview room. I met a priest who at the time was 87 years old, Father Don Tarnifus. And he was walking on his cane on the hallway and he looked at me and as I was passing him, he turned around and he said, James Kimeo. First of all, he pronounced my last name correctly, which never used to happen when I was abroad. And I stopped and I said, Father Don, how could you possibly remember me? And he gave me a little story of how he remembered me and he told me about my brother and sister and others. And I can tell you from that moment, I felt so attached to that institution. I said, these people know who I am. They remember me. Even though it was the act of one old monk, it made me feel so warm and realize, wow, this place cares. So if every institution of higher learning can ensure every staff member, every faculty understands their role in making everybody who comes as a student and now an alumni feel at home, then they will create the strongest engine that will move the institution to further heights. And in Africa, we are a little bit behind, but I can promise you we shall catch up. Thank you, James, for sharing your expertise with us. And wow, I have learned so much already. To our audience out there, alumni giving is a vital, vital aspect of supporting educational institutions and the society at large. And, you know, we hope this episode has shed light on the significance of alumni giving, and we hope it has also inspired you to get involved. To learn more about the When Alumni Give campaign, please take a look at our podcast description. Do not forget to subscribe to this podcast for more insightful discussions and generosity. 